Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda Moy. I'm a registered nurse in Ontario, Canada. I'm a foot care nurse and I'm a certified diabetes educator. And all that being said, I'm also the owner of Little Piggy's Foot Care. Today I would like to talk to you about diabetes. Um, and I've been trying to figure out ways of explaining it. Um, it's really complicated, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it can be a situation where you end up um, because of your ethnicity or your family genetics or injury or viruses like there are so many genes and such that contribute to your potential for getting diabetes or your potential for um, for not getting diabetes it affects 25 percent of the population in the world so this is something that has been steadily increasing but the really great part is, is that we've had some incredible, incredible ways of managing it. And it's now, instead of being a death sentence, it is people can live a very, very good, full, long life with it, which is just incredible. So diabetes in its simplest form that I can think of is the presence of something called hyperglycemia, which means high blood sugar. For whatever reason, your body no longer is utilizing the insulin it has, it's become resistant to it, it doesn't have enough, It, um, your pancreas has been somehow injured and is no longer producing it. And it is a vital, vital part of um, the metabolism of carbohydrates. And so if it's not available, if insulin's not available, um, the sugar has nowhere else to go. It stays in the blood because insulin is what helps it get to, I like to think of it as it opens the doors to the cell and lets the um, sugar or the carbohydrate in to allow that cell to function properly and utilize that energy. If it doesn't have that, then you feel sluggish and tired and your muscles are, they just, and you're losing weight and, but you're feeling terrible. The symptoms of diabetes are things like, um, uh, they call it polydipsnia, like a thirst, <laughs> drinking a lot of water, um, urinating a lot, fatigue, tired, um, losing weight or gaining weight, um, usually losing. There's usually a, a period of losing weight quite a bit, feeling sluggish and um, irritable. Um, it can be things like getting a cut or some kind of small infection. It's not healing, feeling like you have the flu. There's all sorts of different things. Um, but realistically what's happening is that the blood has a higher content of sugar and it's not able to deliver, um, deliver that much needed nutrients and energy into the cell. So it, if left untreated completely, it can be deadly. So, one of the complications and something that is often present in um, diabetes is something called neuropathy. And it is something that we as foot care nurses and foot care professionals uh, deal with on a, on a regular basis. And this neuropathy plus a, a bunch of other reasons can inevitably lead to amputation. So we're gonna go back to the high blood sugar. If you know that you have diabetes, there is multiple ways of treating it. Whether that be getting insulin or getting an agent that is going to help your body use the insulin it still has, or help um, to get rid of the blood sugar through the kidneys, or there's a whole bunch of different agents that are available right now, which when I started nursing, we didn't have all of them. And it's just incredible to think how far we've come. So, um, Signs and symptoms of neuropathy is kind of your feet and your hands tingly, numb. I've heard people um, say that they feel like they're walking on a block, um, walking on cotton, pins and needles, like you're walking on thumbtacks. Um, just trying to think. Sometimes it just doesn't feel. And that can be quite dangerous because what neuropathy actually is, is the deadening of nerves. So we rely on nerves in our feet to tell us what kind of terrain we're on, um, if there's anything sharp on the ground. Um, it's our way of feeling. We can feel so many things through our feet. And if we don't, ha if they're not 
if the nerves are not getting nourished, they die off and we're, we might not be aware of it. Um, so because of the high blood sugar, I like to think of it as roots of a tree. Okay. I even drew out a little bit of it. I don't know if you can see that, but just down here, right? Like you've got the roots. So you've got the higher. So when the sugar is in the blood, it makes it a bit more thick, right? The blood is thick. And so it can't get down to the finer capillaries and the nerve endings that are in our fingertips and on our toes and in our feet. So without that nourishment of the blood and the lack of insulin, they just don't get it. It does not get it. Um, your feet feel cold. They are achy or they just, they're not the greatest. You get tired from walking faster. Um, so the best way that we can, sorry, the signs and symptoms of neuropathy are things like the way your foot feels. And I spoke of that before dry skin, nail changes. Sometimes the foot can actually change its structure. Um, the toes can claw and bend and create this really high arch, which makes that foot less flexible, which can be really challenging. Um, when you're trying to fit shoes to it and so on and so forth. Ulcers can happen, calluses because of that, um, because of the structural changes of the foot, it can cause the weight to be redistributed and it can cause friction and challenges in your shoes and cause calluses and dry spots. Um, it increases your risk of ulcerations and then it decreases your heal, um, it increases your healing time as well. Sometimes you get chronic wounds that won't heal because they don't get that nourishment right from that blood sugar. The best way you can prevent it is to maintain a blood sugar of four to seven. So utilize the agents that are available to you to manage that. It is your best way of fighting neuropathy. Now neuropathy is typically present in about 30% of cases and sometimes you can't um, you can't control that, but what you can do is still continue to protect your feet. So we've learned recently that, you know, our, sometimes our brains lie to us. It tells us that it's Tuesday and it's Friday or it's Friday and it's Tuesday. Um, the same is true with our brain and our feet, right? So in the presence of neuropathy, if this is already established, sometimes our, our shoes are too tight because we can't, we don't have the proper sensation to tell us that they aren't. Um, so we have to do the investigative work that our foot would have normally done. So I always suggest no matter, I don't care if you have diabetes or anything, we always check our feet. Sometimes, you know, our body can lie to us. So we're looking every day, we're looking at the bottom of our feet. We're feeling the bottom of our feet with our hands. We're feeling for cuts, scrapes, bumps, bruises. Um, is something in it? Um, we're looking at our nails and making sure that they are clean and tidy. We're um, making sure in between our toes are dry. Um, we're applying moisturizer, um, any kind of oil, pick a uh, coconut. Uh, we use here sometimes coconut oil, olive oil, um, you can use moisturizing cream, you can use a foot foam, you can use whatever you want. Just make sure that, that your skin is intact, meaning that there's no cuts, scrapes, bumps, bruises, calluses, corns, anything in it. Um, and that that's our safeguard. Um, so I'm checking inside my shoes before I go somewhere. I'm making sure, I live in um, Canada and it's the weather is crazy and we have to wear shoes so and we have to wear sock usually the suggestion is if you're wearing a closed toe shoe that you have a nice cotton sock or something that's going to wick moisture away from the foot keeping it dry but you need it dry and moisturized enough that it's not too dry because part of neuropathy is because the because your foot and the skin in it is not getting the appropriate nutrients, it tends to be extremely dry and dry skin can crack and a crack in the skin can cause a uh, entrance way for bacteria and for pathogens. So you want to be very careful about that. See, you can stub your toe or you could walk on something and not know you've injured yourself. And just because you didn't physically feel that doesn't mean it stops the 
it doesn't mean it stops the damage that has been done, right? So if you can't see the bottom of your foot, if you can't um, bend in that way, I would suggest you get a mirror and hover your foot over it so you can see the mirror or get a loved one to look at the bottom of your feet. Sometimes I've had um, people use their phones or a device to take a picture of the foot so that you can see. And um, I know in, I have a Samsung something, but you can widen it and you can, you can see a lot of detail if you need to, which is really a great technology. So um, we're gonna watch for that. It's important to make sure that you are measuring your feet because sometimes, well, like I said, when you're talking about neuropathy, neuropathy is simply just, you can't feel things appropriately. The finer sensations in your, your nerve endings have um, left, they're not working anymore, and you don't really know what's going on with your feet, and that's the big problem. So I suggest getting your foot measured. Okay, this is called a Branix device. I know here in Canada when I was younger, so I'm approaching that 40 age. And um, so we used to have these in all stores. And so this is a device that measures the length of your foot, the width of your foot, and the, the height and difference of your arch. It helps to get better quality and better um, fitting shoes because you know how big or how small your foot is. Another thing that I've been tempted to do is I trace or have one of my kids trace my foot on a piece of paper with a pen around my foot. And then I cut them out both left and right. And I will go to the store, just forgive me, um, here we go. I will go to a store and I will take out the insole of the shoe and I will compare the insole to my cutout. And if the cutout is over the toes at all, like if um, the piece of paper that I've used, I usually use a white piece of paper. If there's any over, it means that it won't, your, sh your foot will not fit in the shoe. So um, that is something to consider. Um, you wanna make sure that you are inspecting your shoe daily before you leave. You wanna be putting your fingers in there. You wanna be shaking it out. You want to be looking at the bottom to see if there's anything stuck in the sole of the shoe. Um, you want to look at the wear and tear of the shoe. I have another shoe here, sorry again. Uh, you want to look at the wear and tear of the shoe. Because when you have, like this shoe is very worn out. I don't know if you can tell that. But if I was to get a thumbtack right there, it would easily come through the sole. And I would be stand uh, stepping on it. And that would cause... Well, it could cause a puncture, it could cause a callus, it could cause a corn, and um, either way, it would cause problem to my foot. So you need to make sure that the shoes and the footwear that you are wearing is appropriate. And, um, and that, you're looking for breaks in skin, bumps, lumps, bruises. Sometimes as we age, unfortunately, we lose the fat pad in our foot, which makes us more prone for injury. And there's no cushioning. So sometimes we rely on things like, we call it mole skin here. It's a felt that you can put on the skin. It's like a bandage, which is a bit thicker. So it gives that cushioning back. Um, we'll have different insoles and things that you can put into shoes. Um, when you're talking about walking barefoot, you need to, if you're walking barefoot, you need to know your environment that you're walking on. Because again, the risk of you stepping on something and not knowing is very, very, very high. Um, typically we say to wear shoes at all times um, because that reduces the risk here. Um, I know some people that will literally wear their shoe until they're in their bed, then take the shoe off. And uh, um, just to reduce the risk of um, causing harm to themselves. And um, I know the beds here, they have these terrible metal wheels that are very easy to stub your toe on. And in the middle of the night, then inevitably it ends up happening. Um, so, and that shoe being on there is a protective, you're protecting that area. Um, if you end up seeing that you have a break in the skin in any way, a blister, or any other type of challenge, you need to get it looked at immediately. So take yourself over, it doesn't matter how small it is, to a foot care professional, a, a podiatrist, a chiropodist, 
um, a nurse who specializes in this type of thing um, just to make sure that they can monitor the progression of that wound because it, it has a very high likelihood of it progressing into something that is going to require antibiotics and a care plan to make sure that that wound heals. Um, sometimes, especially in the presence of diabetes, you end up with things like chronic wounds. And if it's not maintained and taken care of, it can lead to something called um, gangrene. It can lead to various, very, very serious, um, very, very serious infections that will inevitably end in amputation. Um, so you, you need to make sure that they're being well monitored. Um, so if you do need to take off your shoes, that's fine. Survey the area, watch your, um, look out. Like when I'm at home, I, I have a high risk of diabetes, but when I'm at home, um, I can look and see that, you know, I've swept, I know that there's nothing on the floor and I can trust that. Um, when I'm walking in my backyard, I've made sure that, you know, we've raked, we've made sure that there's nothing um, it's sharp. There's no rocks and there's stuff like that, that we would be aware of. And, um, and so we look and I often will, um, inspect my feet after if I've been walking outside barefoot. So, um, it's important. And again, socks with shoes help reduce the risk of getting blisters unless they are open to sandals. And um, when we're talking about sandals, the best ones that we recommend have the um, often will have thick straps. Uh, uh, will often often have thick straps. I'm just trying to get them again. Again, these are old shoes. They need to be thrown out, but they're helpful. Like thick straps along here, the forefoot, especially at the forefoot and across the toes, as well as oftentimes I would suggest a backing to it. Just making sure that your foot doesn't slide forward or fall back when you're walking. Um, things like flip-flops and stuff like that, it requires your feet to claw themselves to keep that base of that shoe on your foot. So you wanna make sure you do have that strap along the forefoot, like the mid, almost up to your ankle to make sure that it stays on properly. <laughs> so another thing that can be extremely helpful is something called monofilament testing. So here in Ontario, we have a whole algorithm in how to manage and um, neuropathy. So what we do is we use something called a monofilament, which is a very fine tube, and we test places on the foot to see if people can feel that poke. Um, I, it, unfortunately, I don't think the camera would pick it up. It's just a very, very narrow see-through tube. Um, and we use something called a tuning fork as well to make sure that this person, we that we know. Um, so if you know that your fifth toe um, doesn't feel much, you're going to pay special attention to that when you're daily inspecting your feet. And when you're moisturizing and taking care of your toes, you're going to make sure that um, that one's got a special look to it because you know that it's more prone to getting infected. It's more prone to not feeling if something should be stepped on there, right? Um, another thing that we do here as well is that we do all that I've spoken about. We make sure that the foot is, um, the shoe is properly measured. Um, the recommendations are coming out and this is what a foot care professional can do here, which is absolutely, it's, it's a great, it's a great program. Um, we suggest socks sometimes. Some people have really sweaty feet and they need to change their socks a little more routinely. Um, some people are in construction boots and so on like that, where the shoe itself is extremely rigid and it's not able to bend and move with the foot. Um, sometimes we'll suggest certain kind of padding in the um, inner part of that shoe, especially where the metal shank is, or um, we will recommend certain types of socks, whether they're thicker or thinner. Um, I know for a lot of people with diabetes in Ontario here, we have a company called Simcam that does these special socks that they're very, they have no binding to them. So they're really helpful um, because again, the skin changes and everything, swelling is a really big part of that too. So um, having non-restrictive socks is also helpful 
again, it just allows the fluid to kind of exchange better. And um, so I want to thank you very much for listening. And I hope that I would highly suggest that you find a practitioner or someone who is willing to help you with um, your diabetes. It's really important. I know here in Ontario, we ha have a lot of campaigns out right now to help prevent amputation. Um, there's been a, a higher incidence of amputation during the COVID-19 um, quarantine and stuff. So we're just trying to catch up to that and trying to prevent amputation of anything. And oftentimes it starts with a toe and it, it kind of moves on from there. Um, big signs that your foot is in trouble are going to be poor healing. There's a wound that will not heal. We call a chronic wound. I think it becomes a chronic wound here in about three months. If it doesn't heal in three months, we got some problems. And we often start off with different types of antibiotics or antimicrobials. Um, sometimes we'll use iodine and sulfur and different other things to try to um, promote healing and so on. Um, make sure your blood sugar is between four and seven every time you measure it. Um, use the agents that you have available to you, the medications or the insulin that you have available to you, um, to your best advantage, right? To really maintain that target. Um, oh, signs and symptoms of, uh, sorry, I have a little bit of, I get distracted easily. Um, so signs and symptoms of something when something's wrong, your foot's cold. Um, you see the veins more prominently. It might be pale. It might have a wound that won't heal. Um, the nail beds are going to be dusky there, which means that they're bluish, grayish, pale. They're not the pink. They're not what you normally expect. Um, they're achy. They can be swollen. They can be reddened. They might not be. Um, because that's another interesting part about neuropathy is that somebody who has advanced neuropathy, um, their skin does not show any signs of being injured when it is. So if the digit um, goes a different color than normal, um, some digits that don't have any blood flow to them, they will go purple, a deep purple. Um, they just look different, something's wrong. Um, and you can, and you'll see the skin changes and the textures and stuff like that. It can, um, there are things that can be done to try to prevent this from happening. I had somebody, um, recently and I thought it was very fascinating. They had, um, I saw him before his angioplasty, which is when they put a wire down into the femoral artery. There's a femoral artery and they trace it down and they use a balloon to either, um, they use something in there to either flatten the plaque against the walls or to drag out the blood clot. So I saw the foot before and after, and it was really, really, it was, it was a really great tool that, uh, medically that was really interesting. Um, because you could see that it was cold and it was, it didn't look so great. The skin changes were very, very different. He had a, a slight tiny cut on it that just was there. He had a fungal infection in the nail. Um, the nails were brittle. And then he gets this um, thing and it's back to pink and perfect, um, which was really, really neat to see. Um, another thing is, is that check for pulses. A medical professional should be checking a, a popliteal pulse potentially depending on where they're questioning where the circulation has kind of stopped that's what you're going to be looking for so sometimes we'll check it on the foot the back of the ankle um and then the back of the knee and so we trace where we think things have um things have stopped whether that be a blood clot or whatever that may be um and here, that's how we manage it. I'm not sure um, where everyone is from. So what else do we do? Let's see, there's quite a bit. If we can't find a pulse with our fingers, we often will um, refer to get a Doppler, which is an ultrasound, which is just a finer tool that helps us. It's just like, um, just goes on the skin and we're looking for a pulse and we're looking for blood, um, that we can hear the blood flowing. Um, yeah, and it is, it can be quite painful too. So 
we want to prevent them at all costs. So my takeaway here is to make sure that if you do have diabetes and you know that this is a challenge, to make sure that you can um, you can affect your blood sugar by bringing it down and keeping it into that four to seven, that magic four to seven range um, as much as possible to make sure that you're inspecting your feet, inspecting your shoes, anything that goes on your feet, you're inspecting it and making sure that it doesn't have anything that can cause um, a bump, a bruise, a callus, which is just friction. Um, you're making sure that your shoes are properly fitted to you um, and then they're not worn out, that they're good shoes for yourself. Um, you want to watch for breaks in the skin. And if you do have an ulceration, it's not the end of the world. It's just that you need to make sure that you're really on top of it and that you notice the change right away. So whether that become a little bit of a cut or a laceration or a blister or something like that, that you know about it, you treat it, you deal with it then. Um, don't wait don't wait um, and see if see if there's any challenge to your your circulation um, if your feet is your skin is dry make sure you're moisturizing it if it's too moist or wet make sure that you're changing your socks and keeping them dry keep dry between the toes inspect between the toes um, because if something's gonna happen it's gonna be in between those toes <laughs> and that's where it's gonna all start um, that if you have calluses corns if you have if you can't do your foot care yourself that you know a professional that can help you out um, and that you can keep yourself as healthy as possible um, and notice any nail changes foot structure changes or anything else like that I want to thank you so much for being part of this um, if there's any questions I ask that um, you know you ask them so that we can answer them and make sure that you we can get your feet feeling healthy and that you can walk good so I thank you so much for viewing this presentation and I'm going to hand this off to Anita. Take care.